Shove it, man! All right, Shove It Squad. I recently joked that I was running a competition. If you could last it through the top 10 matches of Garrett Bischoff, you would win a signed picture of me slamming Andre the Giant. This got me thinking, could I make it through every single Garrett Bischoff match on TNA Impact for real? There was only 30 of them, including pay-per-views. How hard could it be? Garrett is one of the most hated men in TNA history and is one of the most recent cases of nepotism in modern day wrestling. It's hardly like his dad was Ric Flair. His dad was Eric Bischoff, so it's not genetically in him to be a good wrestler. I've set myself a challenge to watch every single Impact match and pay-per-view from this cheesy sideburn, cheap tracky wearing, no talent goon. Yes, I'm a masochist. It's my mission to have something nice to say about him by the end of the video. And please remember, I'm not grading the match itself, I'm grading Garrett's involvement in the match. Maybe we're going to learn that Garrett has some amazing finishing manoeuvre that we all slept through, or in my case pissed all over my TV screen through. So this is a brand new series on my channel, Ring of the Hawk! Nepotism makes me squawk! Before his debut as a wrestler, Garrett had been a referee, Jackson James, but then went against his father and the Immortal Faction. Ric Flair and Eric tried to teach Garrett a lesson by forcing him to be a wrestler. His first match was against Gunner. Garrett comes out for his debut in a wife beater with some Sports Direct trackies on. Garrett starts out with an arm drag and a hip toss. He then hits a back body drop. Flair then attacks the referee so the match is thrown out. It went about a minute. Not much of a debut here, is it? And it didn't exactly leave me wanting to see more of him. Great, that's only one match down. I don't ever want to see this loser again on my screen, and I'm only on match one. I'm giving this an F for time wasted. Mind you, this is literally Garrett's first ever match. It's not as if he's been competing on the indies for years. Match two. Garrett was Sting in his corner versus Gunner with Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff in his corner. In Garrett's second ever match, he main evented Impact. Let that sink in for a minute. Garrett Bischoff main evented Impact. Bit soon, don't you think, guys? Anyway, it's a nothing match. Gunner dominated the match. It went about a minute, but then Garrett won with some fluky DDT out of nowhere. Maybe this is his amazing finishing manoeuvre. Match three, he took on Gunner with Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff again. Gunner sends the two old greys to the back and says he doesn't need their help. This match looks like a professional wrestler versus a scrub from the audience. Garrett hits a bulldog and a face plant before Gunner shoulders him in the face. Gunner then beats him up around the outside of the ring. Surprisingly, the crowd are behind Garrett here. Gunner is so intense that he just wants to hurt Garrett. Garrett then randomly scores a pin with a single leg takedown. Maybe Gunner shouldn't have sent away the two old men. Well, it was better than the last match and at least the crowd cared. I'm giving it a C because I just enjoyed Gunner hitting the pile driver after the match on the outside of the ring. Match 4 is a pay-per-view. Jesus. It's Garrett Bischoff on pay-per-view against Gunner. Against all odds 2012. It's 12 minutes! Ugh. Eric Bischoff is in the corner of Gunner and the Hawk is in Garrett's corner. The Hawk was revealed as Garrett's personal trainer and the Hawk endorsed him as the future of professional wrestling. Garrett hits his first ever dropkick here, although it's not exactly impressive. Garrett also busts out a new pin, but it looks a bit sloppy. This match is the definition of a snooze fest and the crowd are almost in silence. Gunner beats on him forever before Garrett drops him on his face. Gunner keeps hitting net breakers and then the Hawk goes to throw in the towel because that's apparently a thing in wrestling. Gunner then wins with a DDT. Even with the Hawk at ringside, nobody cared, and it was slow and boring. D, moving on. Match five, Garrett and Jeff Hardy. Wow, what a strange pairing. Versus Gunner and Kurt Angle in the main event of the night. During the match, they work over Jeff Hardy for about 10 minutes whilst Garrett waits on the outside. I wish I was joking. We are waiting for Garrett Bischoff to come into the ring to save the day. Garrett keeps being stupid and letting the heels cheat. Garrett eventually gets the tag and it consists of a flapjack and a dropkick. He then hits a wacky neck breaker. Maybe this is his finisher. Maybe not. Kurt kicks out. Jeff then hits the swan tom for the win. Garrett didn't exactly have to do much luckily. Probably the best match so far. I quite like that wacky neck breaker move he did. Match 6. Garrett Bischoff versus Kurt Angle. Wow, they were really pushing this kid. It's a 5 minute challenge. Garrett has to try and last the 5 minutes. If he does, he wins. The sum total of Garrett's offence is the three of the worst looking punches that I've ever seen that Kurt Angle doesn't sell at all. Kurt then hits the angle slam but the clock runs out so Garrett technically wins. An outcome that did nothing for neither man. Kurt was unable to beat the worst member of the roster and Garrett got his ass kicked and would have lost the match if the match went 5 seconds longer. F. Match 7. Garrett Bischoff versus Kurt Angle in a 3 minute challenge match. Kurt was so embarrassed that Garrett beat him last week so this time he says he won't last 3 minutes. Garrett hits his finisher again. We need to come up with a name for this move. How about the Grease Cutter? 
Garrett hides on the outside and then runs down the clock, so then Gunner runs out and attacks him for the DQ. So Garrett technically wins again. A pointless match, F. Match eight, TNA lockdown 2012, lethal lockdown. Garrett continued feuding with his dad. If Garrett's team loses, Garrett must leave TNA and the same goes for Eric. Believe it or not, Garrett was the team captain with Austin Aries, AJ Styles, Mr. Anderson and RVD and Garrett is in charge of these men. He starts the match out so we're gonna see plenty of Garrett here. Garrett hits some drop kicks which Gunner no sells and then a top rope drop kick to take Gunner down. Garrett then takes a huge boot to the face from Bully Ray. Later on, he takes a top rope clothesline from Gunner whilst they tell us that Garrett Bischoff is trending on Twitter. Gunner then launches his face into the cage whilst the crowd chant one more time. Eric is also in the match and enjoys seeing his son getting beaten up. Garrett hits the grease cutter again before his dad beats him up with a kendo stick. Garrett then suddenly recovers and hits his dad with a guitar shot and pins him for the free. Do you know what? This is the best match of Garrett's TNA career. I'm calling it right here. I'll give it a B. It was a good match, but it's just crazy to think that this entire match was built up around Garrett and his dad. Eric Bischoff must now leave TNA, if only he actually did after this match. Instead we got to enjoy Garrett and JB pushing over a porta potty with Eric Bischoff inside it. Match 9. Over the top rope battle royal. During the match he throws Devon out, but then he gets kicked in the face by AJ and thrown out. It was about 20 seconds, it's not going to be an A is it? Match 10. Devon versus Garrett in a TV title match. Devon was after revenge because Garrett eliminated him from the over the top rope battle royal match last week. Garrett adds a running neck breaker to his arsenal here. His hair is getting long enough to start calling him a gypsy. The Robbies interfere in the match because they're in the middle of a year long blood feud with Devon. Garrett helps Devon fight them off. I'm not rating this one either, it was pointless. Match 11, Slammiversary 2012. The Robbies versus Devon and Garrett. I have zero expectations for this match. How is this on pay-per-view? I would be livid if I paid to see this. There's not really much to say. Three of the guys involved in the match are terrible. Garrett gets zero offense here until he gets one move and then Devon gets the tag and wins the match on his own. This might as well have been a handicap match. Oh well, I guess teaming with Garrett Bischoff is a handicap in itself. I give it an F because I hated it. Match 12, Garrett and Devon versus Daniels and Kazarian for the tag titles. Garrett gets beaten up by bad influence until Devon gets the tag and does it all on his own again. Garrett tries to help out but he gets thrown out of the ring and this allows Kazarian to smack Devon with a belt for the win. Garrett essentially cost his team the match and gets zero offense in again. F again, I'm starting to see a trend here. Things are about to get interesting though. Match 13, Kurt Angle and Garrett Bischoff versus the Aces and Eights. This is the early days of the storyline and one of the guys is masked here. I think it's Nux. The other is Devon who isn't masked. Devon has joined the Aces and Eights because he's sick of teaming with Garrett. There's not much to say, Garrett is attacked on the outside and the ref doesn't see it. Wes Briscoe then runs out to make the save for Kurt Angle, as he was about to get smashed with a hammer. Kurt scores the roll up pin and Garrett did absolutely nothing again. F. Match 14, Wes Briscoe versus Garrett Bischoff, gut check match. A clunky, horrible match by two of the worst impact wrestlers of all time. Bischoff hits the flapjack, so it's not his finisher, but it's definitely one of his favorite moves because I've seen it a few times now. Wes Briscoe rolls him up for the free. Garrett is so bad that he's the first wrestler to lose in gut check. Unfortunately, we'll be seeing much more of these two together. I'm gonna give this one D. D for don't ever wanna see these two in a match again. Match 15, Aces and Eights versus Angle, Joe, Wes and Garrett. The story here is that Kurt Angle is training Garrett and Wes Briscoe. Joe is in full control and then he tags Garrett in who immediately loses the advantage for his team. One of the Aces and Eights is a wrestler called CJ O'Doyle. Can't say I've ever heard of him. Garrett hits a bad looking DDT and then almost botches the Devon Spinebuster. Garrett saves Kurt from getting hit with the hammer and then Angle wins it with the Angle Slam. Garrett gets a C here because at least he helped his team in some way. Match 16, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff versus the Robbies. I don't want to watch this. I think I'm done. I, I've wa I can't do this anymore. I don't want to watch any of these guys in a match. But if I don't do it, I'm a massive hypocrite. I can't ask you guys to do it and then if I can't do it myself, can I? Someone needs to hit me with a brick and make me snap out of this. Okay, fine. Garrett hits his flapjack on Robbie E. Wes Briscoe then beats Rob Terry with a crossbody. <laughs> I think somebody told me ages ago in the comments section that Wes Briscoe's finished with a crossbody from the top. Maybe they're right. Kurt Angle is out celebrating but gets attacked by the Aces and Eights. Garrett Bischoff and Briscoe then turn on Kurt Angle and reveal that they were members of the Aces and Eights all along. The following night, Hawk Hogan was born. It's because of you, Hawk Hogan! 
Garrett hits the grease cutter. Pretty sure EC3 stole this finish from Garrett, actually. Wouldn't brag about that if I was him. I'd keep that quiet. Match 17, Samoa Joe versus Garrett Bischoff at Wembley. Match is thrown out because Briscoe runs out for interference. Joe was about to win anyway. Garrett gets an F. Match 18, Garrett Bischoff and Doc versus Magnus and Samoa Joe. Garrett forgot how to do any moves around this time and could only do weak looking punches. The crowd chant, you can't wrestle. They were right. Garrett was completely useless in this match and his team lost. F. Match 19, Lockdown 2013. The Aces and Apes versus Team TNA. Garrett doesn't start out the match this year, thank God. Bischoff is the third member of the team to enter the cage and he immediately tries to help his team by eye raking Magnus and Samoa Joe. Sadly it doesn't work and within 20 seconds Garrett is on the floor being battered. During the match Bischoff gets scared and tries to escape the cage. It ends up with a giant tower spot with Bischoff at the top. Eric Young wins with a top rope elbow because Bischoff did nothing again. F. I have to say he was much better as a face. Match 20, Aces and Eights versus Team TNA again. Garrett literally did nothing. I don't think I ever saw him in the match. Maybe he peed his knickers again and ran off. F. Match 21, Aces and Eights versus Storm, Angle and Eric Young. Garrett Bischoff took a German suplex in this match. Garrett tries to bring a chain into the match so Briscoe rolls up Angle for the free. I can't believe I just witnessed Briscoe pinning Angle for the free. There's no saying Angle didn't try and help these two kids. Bischoff gets a D because at least his team won for a change. Match 22, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff versus Kurt Angle. Handicap match. Kurt beats on them for ages. The highlight of the match for Garrett is a suplex. I spent the match trying to decide who was worse, Wes or Garrett. There's a really dumb German suplex spot in this match where Wes won't let go of his own partner, so they both end up getting suplexed. Garrett hits Angle in the head of a chain and pins him for the free. I have not seen a single impressive thing from this guy and I'm really struggling to hang in there. Match 23, Samoa Joe versus Garrett Bischoff. A match that was thrown out almost straight away. Aces and eights could never win anything, and if they did win, they always did it through cheating. Match 24, Slammiversary 2013. Aces and eights versus Magnus and Joe and the Jeff Hardy. Before the match, Hogan tells Garrett he's a bitch and so is his old man. He wasn't lying. Joe makes Bischoff look very stupid during this match. Look at this twist of fate as well. Why did Jeff Hardy's finisher become a stunner in TNA? Can anyone let me know down below? Was it just that the TNA wrestlers didn't know how to take it? Surely Jeff would have told them how to take it. Garrett doesn't get a single offensive move in this match again. F. Match 25, Aces and Eights Battle Royal. This isn't really a match. They've been forced to fight each other, but they don't want to do it. So Anderson throws them out of the ring in a jokey way. Hilarious. Match 26, the main event Mafia and AJ Styles versus Aces and Eights. The person who gets pinned in this match must leave TNA. Hopefully it's Garrett. Garrett actually hits a move in this match. Yes, it's been a while. He hits that flapjack move that we haven't seen in ages. Unfortunately, AJ Styles pins Devon and not Garrett. F. What, you expected me to increase his grade just for hitting one move? You can shove it. Match 27, Gunner and Storm versus Briscoe and Bischoff. Garrett Bischoff hits one move in this match, a steel chain shot to the back of Gunner, and it's over. Somehow they won this match, I don't know why they gave them the win at this time. The Aces and Eights was basically finished at this point. Match 28, the main event Mafia versus Nux, Garrett and Briscoe. Loser leaves TNA, again. Briscoe taps out to Joe, and he's gone. Garrett never did a thing, F. Match 29, Nux and Garrett Bischoff versus AJ Styles, handicap match. This is a main event match. This is Garrett's final televised match. Praise the Lord, I've made it. Garrett hasn't actually been very botchy. I was quite surprised. I thought we'd be seeing a load of bad stuff, but he sure was bad in this match. Now everyone watch closely. You're about to see the most impressive move of Garrett's wrestling time. It's a double underhook suplex, and even the commentary team seems shocked about it. AJ then throws Garrett Bischoff into a pin for the free. Not long after this, the Aces and Eights would disband and Bischoff and his dad would sue TNA over unpaid salary. If you ask me, TNA were right not to pay them because they sucked. Do I have anything positive to say about Garrett then? Well, yes, I do actually. Believe it or not, this might completely shock you all, but his hairstyle greatly improved by the end of his time in TNA. It was such a mess at the start and now it's a bit slicker. So Garrett, maybe if you'd spent as much time practicing your wrestling ability as you did in the barbershop, you might have gone further in TNA. So the bigger question is, does Garrett belong in Ring of the Hawk? The answer is a resounding no. We don't do jobbers with no finishers or good matches here, brother. Get back to the indies, dude, with Wes Briscoe, you talentless hack. And if you don't agree with that, I'll break your back.